first thing that's on my mind Taste that bag today Taste that bag today Taste that bag I can't waste none of my time What's happening, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening You already know what time it is, baby It's another episode of the Chase That Bad Podcast And I'm locked in the vault I'm locked in the vault This Chakra Media vault Man you know, it's crazy, bro, because, well, before I say that, i say this. We got the man, the myth, and the legend. That's where they first came from. We got, we got, we got, we got an amazing man. That's all I can say, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really can't even put words together, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, to be guess, honest. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really can't even put an introduction together, bro, because it's like I really don't know what to say. I feel like anything I say is a, is a, is a disservice. You know what I'm saying? Because I really can't put in the words, bro. You know what I'm saying? How monumental it is to sit down once again in front of nobody else other than choose what's happening, baby. Chase that bag, man. It's a pleasure to be here. Man, it say, is. man. Hey, you know, you know, now I can say what I wanted to say. You know... You know, you was the first East Texas artist, man, that I sat down with. You know what I'm saying, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you was the first East and Texas artist. And you artist. did justice by 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 doing that, bro. You know what I'm saying? You got the right nigga to get in front of your camera and, and, and do what you need to do. Yeah. And I'm back. You know already. You did already. that. Already. That's what's up, bro. It is a privilege. A pleasure and an honor to be sitting down here with you today. Um, I've been excited. I've been uh I've been thinking about this one for the last few days, man. Just uh eager to sit down and uh and just have a great conversation with you, bro. So uh, you know, I'm excited, man. I've been uh I've been holding back, but I'm ready to uh get to it. Yeah, I I, I say something before you get started though. You know for what sure. I'm saying? I um uh, Shit, I, I just want to thank the Lord for being here, nigga. Shit. And, you know, just over the months, you know what I'm saying, of what we've been doing from the last interview we had, I, I just want to say I, I appreciate what the Lord has done for a nigga. Yeah, yeah. Shit, I'm, I'm, you know, still shaky. Everybody struggle here and there, but shit, just, just thankful, you know, just to be able just to be like, hey, I do appreciate what the Lord had done for me, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want everybody to feel the same way. I read it. I read it. That's what's up, bro. That's what's up. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, without further ado, mm-hmm. let's jump right on in. So, so too, you know, considering that you've already sat down, you know what I'm saying, with me, you know, we, we know your background, you know what I'm saying, but... You know, just so people know, once again, where you from? Where are you from? I'm from Tyler, Texas, East Texas, 903, Trigger Town. Yo. However you want to spell it, say it. This is where I'm at. This is where I'm from. Uh, I've been in the game probably, I done lost count by now, 15, 12, 15 years. They be thinking you old, too, because you've been consistent for so long, bro. I want them to think I'm old. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, shit, I, I've been putting in a lot of work, man. You know what I'm saying? Some people would say I'm not as successful as I should be, but who are they to measure my success? I was just going to say that. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I've been here, still here, still making moves, doing moves, owning shit. Yo. Loving shit. Yo. You know what I'm saying? Don't stop. Yo. Shit. Yo. Absolutely. You've been extremely busy. Um I stay these busy. Last, what, eight months, nine months, ten months? Man, I've been busy for years. It, yeah. It's just what you've been tapped into the last yeah. few months, nigga. I'd stay busy. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta stay busy. My my mind gotta just stay occupied because, you know. Yeah. Sluggish mind, man, it, it just it turns into Absolutely. Laziness. Absolutely. And an idle mind is a devil's devil workshop. workshop. You hey. know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So, you know, when we last sat down, you know, you had just dropped. No, matter of fact, we sat down, I want to say, a couple of days prior to it releasing. Um, mind of a Pimp, Volume 3. Oh, yeah. And uh, since then... You know, it, it did release like a few days prior to that interview. 
And, uh, you know, you've been grinding, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you've definitely been pushing a, a single off of it for sure. The name of the single is Wagon. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, what's been going on with Wagon? Man, Wagon has done exactly what I thought it was going to do. You know what I'm saying? That song was made for the trail ride, strip club, all that. And it's it's really done done a little bit more than what I was going to do online. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I thought the club and the trail ride scene was going to pick it up before online got to it. Yeah. But the wagon challenge, it, it just, I get so many videos every day. I, you know, I got so much other stuff I got going on. I can't really post all the wagon challenges that I do get. But most definitely I'm going to post them. But, you know, yeah. wagon is, I think that's going to be my my introduction into where I need to be. You know what I'm saying? The industry, I guess you would say. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. What social media sites have you been posting? Well, wagon, I, I, I say this. I ain't got enough money for TikTok. They they take everything I got. I post down. <laughs> you know, I'm community guidelines, however they want to put it. But yeah. um, Facebook, Instagram, I do Snap a little bit. Um, yeah. I I got a lot of Snap followers, but I you know I I post periodically on on Snap. But you go to Instagram, you see everything I got because they don't take nothing. They don't take it down. Yeah. With TikTok, I know you said that a lot of times the community guidelines will, you know what I'm saying, end up pulling yeah. it down. Yeah, man. You, you know, if you ain't an influencer or already got, you know, a certain amount of followers, TikTok kind of shady. They, they'll block your shine a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I say this. They'll block think, your shine. I think. Uh, I think it's just. I think it's just the guidelines. Like, I, I got an animated cover for a single. And when I post it to run an ad, even though it's animated, it gets denied because the the animated looks as if it has on something that's see-through. With TikTok, I noticed, though, even with mm. TikTok and its strict guidelines, and I mean, it's cool, you know what I'm saying? Um, it has been an instrumental platform in breaking artists, breaking records, and growing fan base. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, did, when you did post it, like, did you see any traction from it? Man, matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to just say this. I, I had a guy hit me up, uh, you know what I'm saying? He got about 100,000 followers on TikTok, bro. You know, He in a trail ride group. He said he posted it the same day it went viral and TikTok took it down. So, like. It was a video? Was it a clip from the video? No, his trail ride group made a wagon challenge. Okay. You know what I'm saying? A whole bunch of females, you know, it was at trail ride. You know, he recorded it and he put it up on his, his TikTok. Like, I seen his TikTok. He got about 100,000 some followers. Each video was over 50,000. He got some at 4 million views on TikTok. So I believe it when he tell me that he put it up. I don't, I don't really check my TikTok like that because I know they take my stuff down. Yeah. But he said that he put it up, and he said it went viral the same day. Yeah. But they took it down. I wonder why they would have took it down. I, I, I wonder mean, what you it, know, what they, they shaking their ass in it, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? But unless we spend money directly to TikTok, I'm pretty sure they're going to monitor and filter what they want to show on their site. You know I what I'm saying? I feel you. But as soon as I get enough money to uh, to to do what I need to do, guess what? Yeah, we going to TikTok headquarters. <laughs> it's it's crazy because I've been hearing like uh just the science behind it. I've heard that you have to post three times a day. If you post three times a day, um, you can post your own content, but you can also mix in and incorporate some other trends as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like they really growing, they growing fan bases on there for real. So. TikTok is almost like, well, I ain't going to say almost. I'm going to say it is the new SoundCloud. You know what I'm saying? Um, somebody even pointed out, they said it's the only app that's logo is a music symbol. I'll tell you something else. Uh, Toby, I, I don't know how to say his name. You know what I'm saying? He's from Houston. He doesn't know. Toby, uh, uh, Nigue or Nigue or You can't like even say it. That's why I ain't say his name. Yeah. But you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he said that the influencers... Are the new DJs. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Like he said, DJs really ain't too much breaking records in the club no more. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. really the influencers that's got 200,000, a million followers on TikTok or, mm -hmm. or a model on Instagram, got mm -hmm. a million followers. Mm -hmm. They'll post your shit, it go viral. Yeah. They even got, they even have websites now too where you can go on there. It's a pool of influencers. You can go on there and reach out. Um, and connect with them, they charge whatever they charge to yeah. post, you know what I'm saying, your stuff, repost your stuff or make a challenge or whatever you want them to do to it, you know what I'm saying? But that is definitely true. Um, influencers are the new DJs when it comes to breaking records, you know what I'm saying? All right, so hold on, let me ask you this, Joseph. All right, where does that put the DJs at in the next five years? I mean, well, let me say this. <laughs> He's like, who interviewing who? <laughs> Let me say this: when I think about when I think about record breaking DJs, though, right? Mm -hmm. It's almost an unfair expectation to some of them, and this is why I say that: you may have a DJ man, they DJ at the local little shack once a week. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. Yeah. They're a DJ though, yeah, but they not no record breaking DJ. They oh, not yeah. from the, you know what I'm saying? Like they keep the crowd they, alive and then they go home. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like they're they don't have a platform, mm -hmm. if I could use that term. They don't have a platform to actually break an artist. They don't really have a big a base. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but yes, there are DJs who do have a platform, mm -hmm. who do walk under the hat of and the title of I'm a record breaking DJ. You know what I'm saying? For them, they're going to have to continue to brand themselves in the same fashion as an influencer would. You know what I'm saying? I mean, some mm -hmm. of them will still make it, but I think what's going to end up happening is the, the the ones who just ain't really about that, mm -hmm. even the ones who claim they're about it but not about it, they're going to get washed out because influencers are the new DJs when it comes to breaking records. Yeah, that, that's that's That, that makes sense. I, I understand. I, I hear what you're saying. You know, I just want to you, you just know where your mind is. Yeah. Like them influencers, the people that's got followers online, yeah. I I really would kind of expect the DJs to kind of focus more on a social media based following, yeah, and get more followers because you know, like what well, that's what people are spending money for, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely, so absolutely, absolutely. So, so. Wagon has been doing this thing. You've been, you've definitely been promoting it and, and marketing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, I've been trying to get them to spin it down here, bro. I, I, you know, I've been trying to get, uh, you know, on the trail ride DJs and the MCs down here to fuck with that wagon shit. But, but so how has that been going? I can't even pay them niggas to play my shit. I can't even pay them to to fuck with my shit. I, that's just how I feel. You okay. Okay. So, so hold on. Let me let me let's make sure I understand. So, what you saying is that as far as like you've been trying to get it popping with the trail ride scene, meaning I'm assuming like networking with the DJs and stuff, right? This, yeah. This, this, okay. All right. All right. So, so I mean, has so I'm a, I'm assuming you initially reached out in that fashion first, right? How did that How did that go? How How was that experience? Well, first off, I. I'm going to tell you a little history about the wagon by itself. Okay. Hollywood, you know what I'm saying, here in East Texas. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He a trail ride DJ. Well, he a DJ, you know what I'm saying? But okay. he do mostly trail rides. Okay. And you said DJ Hollywood. Hollywood, yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You know, me, you know what I'm saying? Okay. We good. I, I sent it. Well, first off, I was like, hey, Hollywood, I want to make a track, bro, that you can play. Like, I want you to break a record, bro, but let me know what you need from me out of this record so I can go in the studio and produce it. Yeah. And he told me, you know what I'm saying, hey, bro, these females, I heard the trail ride scene, they want to shake ass. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you got the Country Boy song. They, you know, what they vibe to the Country Boy and stuff like that. But what they really want something they can kind of shake their ass to and get live to. So guess what I... I go in the studio and I produce Wagon. I sent it back to him. Was like, hey, bro, I got the specs from you. This what you told me to make. This what my mind come up with. I think I sent it to him, you know what I'm saying? And he really just didn't like it like that. Okay. At first. 
You know, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I'm not sure if he's just really liking it now, just the momentum that it's gaining. But, uh, you know what I'm saying? He really wasn't digging it like that. So I thought it was a hit. Everybody around me thought it was a hit. So we started pushing it. Okay. Uh, still to this day, I I really don't know why I'm not getting booked for the East Texas Trail Ride scene. I, I really don't understand you know, like, you know, like, shit, I got a hot trail ride here. They doing the wagon challenge and send it to me, but when they go to a trail ride, they not playing it. I can't even pay them to play it. So it, I guess that's my <laughs> next point, right? So my next qu- well, not point, but more so question is, okay, so you reached out, you networked, you, you came back, dropped a record for it, you know what I'm saying? You know, regardless of if the DJ liked you know liked it or not, then I'm assuming this is when you're like, all right, well, hey, can you know what I'm saying? Can I pay you to play? Is, is that where that comes in at, at that point? Right. Okay. I'm like, all right, how much? What would it take for you know you to play this or do a wagon challenge at the trail ride that you at? Okay. I mean. I can't physically beat her every time you play my song, bro. So I'm, you know, I compensate for that. I, I I send some bread, man. Show me what you can do. What's up? You know, but I kind of put a lot of that, you know, on like the MCs or okay. So who so who is the MC? Uh, I mean, well, around here, you got men to feed, which you got hype man, you know, hype man B, you got, you know what I'm saying, you know, certain other people, but I didn't reach out. Okay. And, and trying to pay, you know what I'm saying? But I don't, I don't think they fucking with it like that. So I, what, what do you think I don't it know is, why. If, if, you, if you haven't been able to, to network or if you, you haven't been able to offer for it a service, Mm-hmm. I mean, offer pay for the service. What do you think it is? Why do you feel like? I mean, because at this point it's pure speculation. Because I'm assuming they have not responded and told you. Because that's what you're saying. You don't know. Is that is that accurate? Man, that's a good question. Because, like, bro, maybe it's because I haven't just really sat down and spoke to them face to face to figure out what I need to do to do what I need to do to get them to fuck with it. But I didn't hit him. I, I didn't hit him up multiple times. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, what do I gotta do for you to fuck with this song? Money isn't the problem. Yeah. So you know, as far as these sexy goes, I feel like every trail ride, every trail ride DJ should fuck with the wagon shit because it's hot, nigga. Yeah. Play that shit, nigga. <laughs> I always want to hear it, nigga. Ain't sending me videos and shit, nigga. Play that shit. Yeah, yeah. If you don't want to play it, nigga, say it. Yeah. And so at, at least that'll make you. At least you'll understand. Yeah, you know I what I'm saying. I you could be. You can lay your head down. Peace, you, I ain't gotta hit you up. I feel about you. playing it no more. Just say you ain't finna play it. Yeah. And that's cool. Okay. But you know, you know, maybe. Maybe once I won a Grammy for the shit, or, or <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> the bitch go gold or some motherfuckers to start playing that bitch, man. So, yeah. I mean, who has been uh, engaging with you on the record, man? Well, first off, a lot of females. <laughs> okay. Okay. A we lot of trail, wagon challenges. A lot of trail ride groups. Okay. As a whole. Okay. The groups. I'm like talking about it. from Arkansas, from Houston. You know what I'm saying? Some around here in East Texas. Okay. They fuck with it. Yeah. And DJ KC. Okay. The, the, he have been playing that bitch in Mount Pleasant. He sent me videos still to this day where he play it. Yeah. DJ Juice. Yeah. On 102.7 The Blaze. They played that bitch for a whole month. Hold on. Okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. Quick, quick question for clarification. Mm-hmm. So they played it on the radio? 102.7. Okay. 1069 to play. And there was Juice? DJ Juice. That's what's up. Okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Smitty. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Smitty. Yeah. You know, she was supposed to be on that track. We were supposed to do the remix. Okay. I'm still ready to do it, but shout out to DJ Juice. He been playing the shit out there, bitch. I really. 
That's what's up. So, 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 have you noticed any type of um? Has there been any change as far as the momentum of the record since it has been playing in those places? Well, fleet DJs. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of fleet DJs around around the country. Okay. Like they've been fucking with that track, bro. Okay. So just outside of East Texas, bro. Just you know, just the southern state. Even in Vegas, you know what I'm saying. Shout out DJ Prestige, bro. He he sent me videos, nigga. Yeah. Spending that bitch in the hookah lounge and shit, nigga. Hoes shaking their ass at that wagon, bro. In Vegas, Miami. You know what I'm saying? I got folks in Miami riding down the street, sending me videos and them jamming that wagon. So is that why, is it safe to say that's why you're so passionate about the trail ride scene, picking it up? Because that's what you initially intended the song to be for? Well, it, it's, it's, it's really not the trail ride scene like what that I kind of uh, pick out, bro. It's the Southern, you know, like like what we do down here, man. Yeah, it's the culture. You ain't finna get what I'm talking about in that song in 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 New York City or, or California or Atlanta. You ain't finna get that. So I kind of made that song, bro, for us down here. What we do, right? I feel. And you know, like folks need to see what we do down here, man. I feel. If they play it, we can jump on something else. But if they play it, bro, it's over. It'll make a difference. And I think they know that. I think they know that. Man, I hope they pick it up, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like you It's know. monkey see monkey do, man. You know, I gotta win a Grammy before that <laughs> bitch get picked up. <laughs> Shit. Oh man. I um I know like it's really important um that the quality of the music and that the song jam, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, do you do you feel any pressure when it comes to People who say, all right, yeah, I like the song, but I want to see numbers. Like, do you feel any pressure when it comes to that? Bro, I can show you my Spotify numbers. Bro, I can show you my show numbers. Just because how many numbers I got on YouTube or, or, like, what kind of numbers or how many likes I get on a picture or just my social media, bro... Come on, man. You have been getting booked a lot. You bro, know what I'm saying? Like, you've been getting a book a lot. I've been getting booked for years, man. It, it, I mean, it, and it I'm, ain't no and, and I, Right, right, right. And I know that as far as, like, just knowing that. But I'm just saying from my personal experience, like, knowing you over the last 12 months, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're really paying attention to your grind. Like, bro, you've been booked a lot. Now, now, question about being booked real quick. Side note about being booked. Are these are these more are these more paid shows? Or are they like pro bono shows? Like is it a is it a okay. a, a combination? Like how do, right, how is that out. working? My first interview, I, I said, bro, like when I was growing up in the in, in the music industry, about thirteen, fourteen years old, a lot of shit we was doing was was done off of favors. Yeah. So I'm still in that mindset, but ninety percent of my shows are paid shows. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, it's that 10% of shows where I fuck with people. Like, I slide down to a trail ride and fuck with Hollywood and go fuck with them. It's, like, shows I do here in Tyler. I I slide over to the Empire and go fuck with Juice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that shit that I do. Or I'll go to Mount Pleasant and go fuck with KC. Yeah. For nothing. Like, hey, you fucking with my shit, nigga. I pull up, nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But 90% of my shows are paid. Now, granted, I don't always get what I want, but, like, I got a good spokesperson with me, my nigga. Yeah. She we negotiate, nigga. Hey, figure out what's beneficial for both sides. How can we do this? Future shows, we can do two, three shows for this much. What, what's up? You know, so yeah. I got my partner Vince too. So we do a lot of Southern Soul type shit too. Yeah. So like, I'm I'm in all kind of like brackets, bro. You can't really put me in a box because 
I don't turn shit down but my collar. You know, it's crazy because you've done a really good job of making music for that fan base. Like, where you go to perform your shows, like your music, like especially like with Vince, like mm -hmm. that music resonates heavily with that crowd. You know what I'm saying? So this also, I think, has, has been a contribution too. Yeah, like a lot of people try to measure your success. Like, just because I ain't in the Forbes list or, or I ain't on the billboards, like a lot of these artists, bro, like what they hadn't seen a hundred thousand dollars from what they do. But that's and that's why my question is: is like, is there any pressure when it comes to numbers? You know what I'm saying? Because people care about that, unfortunately. You know what I'm saying? And we know that when there's pressure with anything, you know what I'm saying? People will kind of tend to, you know what I'm saying, bend the system. And then that's where you get situations where views may not necessarily be authentic and likes may not necessarily be authentic. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm like, is there any is there any pressure? You know what I'm saying? I, I, I can I can personally speak from self experience, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, what I've experienced in the presses, but I mean, I know it's pressure, bro. You know what I'm saying? You got a high record, but people like Oh, it ain't got enough numbers. And they're trying to measure your success, right? I'll give you a perfect prime example, bro. Mm -hmm. Chase That Bag Podcast, bro, typically typically can do anywhere from 300 to 500 views mm -hmm. on the interview, right? That's, that's granted, not just I post it, but I also make sure I share it and that person shares it and their fan base shares it, right? And people who are a fan base of the Chase That Bag Podcast content share it, right? All of that has to happen, right? Mm -hmm. But typically it's about three to five hundred, right? I noticed that for the area that I'm affiliated with, mm -hmm. that's about that's about accurate. You know what I'm saying? Like, but on the outside looking in, somebody'll be like, oh, five hundred views, three hundred views. I mean, I I mean honestly with that ain't accurate because I get more than that from this area. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So but I'm talking about as far as what I'm connected with. Oh, as far as the podcast, as far as the podcast, as yeah, far as like, yeah, yeah. as far okay, as like, okay. if I post it on my page, okay, that network of friends, yeah, you know what I'm saying, based on cities and locations they from, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, like just that area, like I'm saturated that, yeah. So now it's time for me to expand, you know what I'm saying, more so expand, like, you know, it's crazy, bro. You know how many people are in the East Texas region? I did some research this week. Mm -hmm. I told you the interview had me like really intrigued. I did some research this week. Mm -hmm. And there's a website called east-texas.com, and it talks about the East Texas region. It stretches from north of Texas County all the way down to, like, Beaumont, way down there by Houston, right? 1.9 million people, too. I believe it. It's probably a, it's probably a million in Tyler. Mm -hmm. It's like 100 and, uh, I think it was like 110, and then Beaumont had 115. We number two, Beaumont number one. Jeez. As far as population. I know 100,000 Mexicans stay in the area that I live in on a fraction of Tyler. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying. Yeah. It's more than 100,000 people in Tyler, boy. Yeah, yeah. Way more. So so, so going back to, going back to like the numbers. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I, I check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Wagon is doing authentic numbers. You know what I'm saying? So, so it ain't eye candy to a bunch of people, and that's fine. But the numbers that it is doing, they are authentic, and that means something. So, yeah, I could jack the numbers up, bro. I, I, I could definitely do that. Yeah. But I'd rather not do that. Yeah. You feel me? So, like, is n numbers pressure to me? No. So not bro. for you? No. Numbers ain't, you know what I'm saying? Numbers ain't pressure to me, bro. I believe, and it's not about the numbers. I believe it's about the impact. That's how I personally feel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But but there are people who do feel that pressure them numbers because as a result, they do the things like that. Now, now here's something that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share a thought with you. Now, this is coming from me as an artist as well, right? I've got my artist hat on. I remember in my grind and in my research of trying to figure out how this shit go. You know what I'm saying? I remember coming across a site that said playlist placement. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Playlist placement meaning, like, hey, you pay X amount of dollars, they're going to put your song on a playlist, and it's supposed to tap into the X amount of viewers. 
I mean, not viewers, listeners. As long as you paying on Spotify, and this is solely Spotify. Yeah, right. And you know, you pay, you pay the money, you get the, you get the, uh, the playlist placement. And what happens is every person that streams that song, person as far as like the 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 concept, the the as far as what is being presented with the playlist, that there is a person listening to this playlist, right? Mm -hmm. What happens is every listen counts as a monthly listener. So yeah. I would notice like, damn, I got like six thousand, nine thousand monthly listeners. Mm -hmm. That's because it had been streamed that amount of times. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That song, right? Now, you notice that with the playlist placement, it's only a song, right? Yeah. All right. So then I started noticing, too. I'm like, hmm, if they listening to this song, and I know this song, Jamie, it should bleed over into something else. So what my follower count look like yeah. on my on my profile for my, my Spotify? I'm looking at that. I'm like, hmm, something just don't look right. This is before I got into ads, by the way. Mm -hmm. I'm like, something don't look right, too. So I started noticing, yeah, right? Now, I sit back and I see the same thing happen that happened to me. I see it on other people's yeah. stuff, right? But you know what? I never see anybody really post. What? They never post their Apple for Music artist profile. Well, see, like, that's the thing. Spotify runs a little different algorithm, like what they kind of set up for the money money train that I I'll get into later. Yeah, Apple Music, like with just like what it's almost that. like any other Apple product that it. you get. You can't do it. Look, they gotta really be listening. It's hard to finesse Apple, bro. <laughs> it's hard. To, <laughs> it's hard to get a virus on Apple. <laughs> Apple products, iPhones, bro, like Apple Music. Look, the Apple Music going to tell you the truth about yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, for real. So, as a result, right, mm -hmm. I was like, I can't do this playlist placement because cause unless this is unless I know this real people, and I can only take the person word for it or the company word for it. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm like, man. I'm going to try my efforts in something else. And that's when I got into running ads. And Run what ads. I did was I started specifically targeting Apple products. So I could go mm -hmm. through and select what phones, mm -hmm. what devices. You know what I'm saying? I would put the, the, the Apple music, you know what I'm saying, off in there as a trait, as a targeted trait, along with all the other music, hip-hop related shit. And that's what helped those numbers come up for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But... I knew it was real people though. Well, you but know what I'm I I still wouldn't not tell somebody to fuck with that shit. You know what I'm so saying? So that's a, so that pres presents a great question. Mm -hmm. Is it fuck with it? But don't be out here talking about yeah, I'm running up them numbers. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, like I'm doing yeah, my yeah, thing. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, bro, is there yeah. a rule? Is there an unwritten, unspoken rule to it? You know what I'm saying? No, or is it ain't don't no matter? ain't no rules to this shit? But I'm gonna tell you how I, how I feel. Okay, all right. Fake views, fake numbers, fake likes, and shit. That game been around here as long as I've been living, bro. It's eye candy, bro. But I don't say that it's good or bad. I say it's different strokes for different people. Niggas don't make it the same. Yeah. A motherfucker might stick some fake views on their shit and somebody see their views and then they make it. Or, you see what I'm saying? Or somebody look at their shit and be like, oh, they ain't got enough views. But what's the difference between fake jewelry, fake designer clothes, bro? Like, it's eye candy, my nigga. So who's to say, who's the judge of what you can and can't do in this game? So so this is what I think. I think it causes a psychological, depending on the person. But you can't be bragging it, about this shit, though. That's, and, 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 and that's, I say that myself. And this is kind of like where I'm leaning to, right? It solely depends upon the individual that's in that situation, right? But what it can do for an individual who cannot handle that shit, 
I mm-hmm. personally feel from a psychological perspective, mm-hmm. I feel like I should have went and studied psychology in college or some shit, right? <laughs> from a psychological perspective, what happens is that world that has been created starts to become real in your mind if you can't handle that shit. And now you become to believe the illusion. You know what I'm saying? The illusion becomes your reality. You've created yeah. something in yeah. your mind. Yeah, you can. And now it's like, shit, I got 100,000 people fucking with me, but I can't go book a show and get 100 people in it by myself. But I got 100,000 people. Yeah, but well, you can't spend $50 on some views and then my nigga walking around and saying my shit went viral. I mean, I, I just, you know, like. That's what I'm saying. Humble yourself. You feel so me? That's why like, I say that's how the person I and, and having to have a balance of, you know, humility and, 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 you know, balancing that pride and balancing that humility, man. Just finding that balance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, I really don't think it's wrong to use it, though. I really don't. You know what I'm saying? Because in the past, I have used it, bro. You know what I'm saying? But, like, it's different strokes with different people. You... Learn different strategies in the game, bro. This game is like a roadmap, bro. You got to kind of find out what works best for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. everybody trying to get to the money yeah. at the end of the day. So, how you get there shouldn't matter. But you got to humble yourself on how you did get there. Yeah. My nigga, so, like, my nigga, if I robbed a nigga, you know what I'm saying, my nigga say I'm up 50 bands. I can't brag about I'm up fifty bands, cause nigga, look what I had to look, look what I had to do to get it. Not real tough. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I say, nigga, just run your race. You know what I think will get a bag? What? Ah, that shit is cool. You know what I'm saying? That shit is cool. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna tell you what I think, a nigga, do get a bag, dog. I'm just see right over there, bro. And and that and it's this ain't cliche. You know what I'm saying? When we first started the podcast, it might have sounded cliche when we started. But we've come to see that it's not cliche. You know what I'm saying? Unity is how you get the bag. i tell you what I mean. One artist in East Texas, I don't know. I could be wrong, right? I, I give myself room for error. However, one artist ain't finna put Three, four, five hundred thousand people in a building by themselves. They're not. No. You know what I'm saying? Like I hear artists all the time, like get online and I don't know. I guess they just woke up one day and was like, "Shit, y'all need to pay us for shows." You know what I'm saying? Like we ain't performing for free no more, no more. I do you think know what I, I'm I do think they need to be compensated. Well, I mean, I mean, I feel you know what I'm saying, I feel money you for what they spending. I'm but. not saying I'm not saying that at all, right? But what I'm saying is, I'm saying fuck all the red tape, fuck all the middleman shit. You know what I'm saying? Like fuck all that shit, fuck all that going through these people. You know what I'm saying? Who don't really care? Who only do what they may do for whatever reason they do it for? You know what I'm saying? Fuck all the tape, bro. Like, my nigga, if 10 artists, I'll say, you know what? We either going to go find a building that's going to let us come in, you know what I'm saying, and work out some other type of deal where maybe we're not paying up front or maybe we have to pay up front, whatever the case may be. If we come together, we put our money in, we get a building, we all promote this one show. Strength is in numbers. We all promote this one show. And then everybody bringing people. Yeah. Like, that's how they get to a bag. That's literally how they do it. Yeah, and bro. they all got merch. They have some merch, have some you can sell to, to upsell, you know what I'm saying, for the fans so you can make some additional money like like that. Plus, 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 plus. Online, online is a beast, bro. It's literally connected to the world. You know what I'm saying? You're a hashtag away from somebody in Germany. You know what I'm saying? Like, these are the ways that I think that really helps aid that push. And the reason why I say all this is because look at East Texas Versus. Oh, I think that was a beautiful topic. transition. What you think about that? That's a good topic, though. You know what I'm saying? It makes me think about East Texas Versus, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's why I said all that to say, like, it's a beautiful transition to transition into East Texas Versus. 
That was a beautiful thing, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, what was your experience with it, Tuzu? How did you, you know what I'm saying? What was your experience with it? How'd you feel about it? Man, first off, me and you and Mims and a few other people, the judges as well, we jumped out on the limb and done the service for with the community. Yeah. The music community. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say this. We can put it on record. As the valley, that's my place, and we did it at. I didn't have to book a liquor security. Hmm. Come on now, so you better say that. I I didn't have to hire no security. Oh, humility. And we done it for five weeks. Every artist came in there. They came in with the mindset of an artist, and we was on their music shit. Was no fighting. Was no beefing. Was no. Fuck you, fuck this nigga. Hey, everybody was clapping for each other, showing each other love, and some money was made. The artists got paid. Yeah. The winners got paid, but they got their songs out there. They got to perform. They got to, like, sharpen their acts. Like, you know, they got to get on the small stage. Yeah. I was trying to tell some artists, I'm like, bro, you got to fuck this small stage up before your mind can even... Think about the big stage. If you can't fuck this stage up, bro, what makes you think you can slide to, you know what I'm saying, like rolling loud or, you know what I'm saying, and fuck up a festival stage, bro? Right. So, like, I just want to put that on record. We didn't have to get a lick of security because of everybody's mindset, bro. It was on that music shit. Niggas exchanged numbers, snap pictures, studio sessions happen, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's beautiful shit. Beautiful shit. I agree, and 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 to add to all of that, not only that, but like a a lot of opportunities was opened up. You know what I'm saying? As a result of that, like people started getting other show opportunities. You know what I'm saying? To perform, and you know what I'm saying? Working with other artists. Yeah. And like like man, bro. Like it was it was a lot of positivity and opportunity that came out of yeah. that circumstance. And situation of a lot of people sacrificing their time, bro. Yeah. And their money. Shout bro. out to the judges, bro. Shout out to you. Shout out to myself. Shout out to the whole East Texas, bro. Uh I'm seeing now a lot of artists are getting shows. You know what I'm saying? And and like what we did, it normalized. Hey, put this artist on. Charge him shit. Put them on. Bro, they need that. Yeah. We need that. Yeah. East Texas need that, bro. So, like, I'm really happy to see Cameron Bell, Delisha J, Lonk, Fu, myself, you know what I'm saying, on shows around the city. Like, that's just beautiful for me, man. Like, like it shouldn't be a show happening here in East Texas that – a local artist ain't on. Yeah. Like, you know, I just feel like that shit is the trend now. It should have been a trend, but now, nigga, yeah, nigga. Yeah. Book us. Yeah. That's, shit, book us. That's what's up. How do you how do you think, uh, you know what I'm saying, you get more East Texas involved? Because the, the reason why I ask that is because it's real easy. To allow the network of people to become and remain your world. However, you have to continue to expand it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it might be it may be twenty heroes and three villains, but you know what I'm saying? Like maybe you tap into three, four, five other uh, towns or cities in East Texas now it's a hundred heroes and twenty villains, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, man. you know what I'm saying? Like how do we how do we expand so that you know what I'm saying? We don't sit in what we think is East. Because, yes, it's East Texas. It's East Texas agenda. But we have so much more ground to to, to gain and to, to be able to network with other people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How how do you feel we do that? Well, I'm a club owner myself, bro. And physically, I can't pick up my building and take it to Dallas. So, the promoters here in East Texas, they promote to East Texas. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So, 
an artist can come down here on some of the shows they promote and and they can showcase their talent or songs to the East Texas audience. Yeah. But the artist should eventually move on because a East Texas promoter can only promote to East Texas people. You feel me? Mm-hmm. The clubs, you can't physically take these clubs and take them somewhere else. So it should be a cycle of East Texas artists that come through. I shouldn't see Cameron or Delicia on uh, every uh, East Texas show. Right. Or Long on East Texas show. Or right. Chuzu on East Texas because, show, bro. Because, because, because that lineup. Yeah, with everybody included, I'm talking about the finalists included and the the showcase artists. Like, bro, like there was still other artists that I know personally go hard, bro. Who was not on that particular show? Not saying they're not gonna be on the next one or the next one after that or whatever. Bro, they weren't on that one because there's so there's so many more. Bro, you got Shelly Tone. Hey, it's a live audience in here tonight. Shelly Tone, True Virtue. You know what I'm saying? Mo Key. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Reaper. Yeah. Payola. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like a whole lot of people within the East Texas versus, you know what I'm saying? Like, fuck with these niggas, man. Yeah. Fuck with these niggas. Yeah, it's bro. a lot of artists. That's why I feel like it can't just be a push one method. It's too many artists, bro. Like, it's got to be a cycle of them. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, ultimately, the strength is in the unity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The unity is where. The magic really happens. You know what I'm saying? And I think sometimes we we lose sight and we lose focus. We just start to focus on, like, a couple things, right? We'll focus on, like, a, a, a video and just the song and DJ play my record. You know what I'm saying? We put all our energy into that. You know what I'm saying? Doing shows, DJ play my record, and a music video and a song. Like, that's where we put our effort. As a result of that, what happens? People will stand in front of us and dangle that carrot, dog. You know what I'm saying? And then what happens? Instead of us trying to create a product that we are supposed to, just like any other business, use that to make money off of, we become the product. The artist becomes the the, the consumer. Man. I, yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's a billion-dollar business, and the artist paying a lot of the money. But at the end of the day, it's a business. You are to create a product. That you can now sell to a base of people. I don't care if it's a bottle of ketchup or a bottle of uh, Hershey's chocolate. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, you're creating a product. So why is it that the artists become monetized? Because they carry being dangled in front of their face. Oh, I'm a DJ. I'm going to play you. You know what I'm saying? Shit, pay me X amount of dollars. And you just like, oh, this DJ a popular person. I see everybody fuck with him. Shit, let me pay him to play it. You know what I'm saying? Now, they might just play it. You know what I'm saying? I think we look for an emotional connection that sometimes don't always happen with a DJ. You know what I'm saying? It really boils down to how much money do we spend with this DJ. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the times before they really just fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? Or it might be a promoter. Mm-hmm. They might have that, they might have their shoes on the world. I'm going to charge you to perform on this show. And what's the carry? Because you think that, oh, if this particular artist hear me, they going to sign me. I just gotta. I just need to rap, and if they hear me, they gonna sign me. These are these carrots that are constantly dangling in front of our faces, and we file for it because all at the end of the day, all we want to do is change our lives, man. We broke, bro. We hurting. We just we barely trying to, you know what I'm saying? We barely make it. We trying to take care of our families, bro. And we got a dream, and we don't want to let that dream go. And I, I know I'm going on and on, bro. And I apologize. I'm just, I just get passionate about this shit, bro, bro. I'm an artist at heart, man. I done paid for shows that I shouldn't have paid for in my own city over the years. I stopped paying for shows because I started to, like, know my worth, you know what I'm saying? Like, I started to put my foot down, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I be expecting artists what to have that, crowd control or that great stage performance but i can't expect that from an artist that y'all won't put on he ain't had, like he ain't had enough time or enough shows to produce what you looking for 
Yeah. So what they tell you, bro? Look out. Put him on. Artist development. Don't charge the nigga arm and a leg. My nigga, some artists should get charged. Yeah. But why tax them so much? Yeah. You know. $100, all right. $150, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like a large, large show, okay. $200. My nigga, but when you start going to four and five and... They might get the time that you say they give them. You might rush them at the end of the day. Don't start on time, you know, so you're rushing them. You, you know, like, 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 look out. Everybody, everybody get paid at the show. The security, the DJ, the venue, the ball, everybody get paid. Right. Ain't nobody paying except us. Yo. Come on, my nigga. Come on, my nigga. Yeah, I mean, and we bring in people. The promoters get paid. So that's why I say, why not just, hey, ten of us get together and put on a show and yeah. cut out all the red tape. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times, I, I, I think sometimes for me, bro, like, and I, I guess I guess my area of opportunity is not to take shit personal in business, but I just don't like when people be double standard in Double standards. Like, they'll that. get online and say one thing and say, oh, this is my approach and this is the type of person I am. But then they conduct their business completely different. Contrary to who they are. I'm talking about a completely I mean, different type of energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's where I start to be like, especially if it's involved with me. I get upset, like, if they do it to somebody else and I wasn't involved because I'm like, what if that was at my front door? But when yeah. I'm involved, I even feel even more passionate about it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I don't like, bro. Bro, I'd feel bad if if I'm trying to hit a lick on artists, and I'm an artist myself, and and I speak on that from that side of the fence. I'd feel bad. Yeah. Bro, I know I could have a show and make the same amount of money without an artist. Yeah. My nigga, so, like, why would I try to make majority of the money back from the artist? Right. And then the night of the show, I don't give them what they, what I told them. Yeah. Or I'm trying to rush them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, well, it's hard to ask me a question like that because I'm an I artist feel. myself, bro. I, I, I like, I, I you know, I'm going to tell you how I feel, man. Yeah, I feel yeah. I, I'm the same way. I try to, I even try to look at it from both perspectives. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But that's where I ultimately come to. Ultimately come to. I know that you are also an entrepreneur. You own a, an event, an event center. Um, It's called the Valley Blues. You know what I'm saying? You also just had uh, a birthday party. Your birthday party was there. Um, you had Mike Jones down. Yeah. Um, some and then I think you done had like a couple other um, events there as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you how do you balance? Actually, no. Better yet, do you brand yourself more as an entrepreneur too, or more as an artist, or is there a balance to it? Bro, it's all art. I mean, what you can call it, what you want to, entrepreneur, whatever, bro. I, I'm an artist at the end of the day. And you can say musical artist, but artist just by itself, nigga, I create, nigga. That's yeah. what I do. Even it's, in creating businesses. That's creating I businesses, I create yourself. vibes, I create frequencies, I create yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I got a club. Yeah, I try to do, uh, I try to do things differently. I try to give my area something new a different vibe to come to you know what i'm saying but mm -hmm. like like we got a pop-up shop coming yeah well it ain't a pop-up shop it's a shopping vibe <laughs> yeah yeah shopping you know, vibe shopping vibe nigga shopping uh, uh, vibe. january 1st nigga. i like that shit that sound good already shit shout out to my sister foot candy yeah we finna do the damn thing and guess what it's free nigga. i already black businesses uh, white businesses, uh, whatever you do, you come down there and, and you you try to promote your business and you try to sell. Yeah. But guess what? You gonna get a vibe while you there. Yeah. So yeah, I'm all that and some. Ah, really? Ah, really? That's what's up, bro. That's what's up. I know you got the top hat on, man. I've always wanted to ask you what's 
<laughs> what's up with the top hat? You know what I'm saying? Like, what does it symbolize? I know that I know it means something. You know what I'm saying? I know the type of person that you are. I know it means something. Man. I just recently, well, I ain't recently. I, I've been wearing a top hat about three years now. Yo. Uh, top hat, nigga, for one, I'm on top, nigga. Jeez. Yo. You got to be a, a confident nigga to walk in any place with this on and rock that hoe. Yeah. I don't give a damn who you is. Yeah. So with this hat, nigga, it, it, it shows that I am somebody, and, and, and you might need to walk up to me and, and ask me who I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's real. But it's also the covering too. You know what I'm saying? I, I you know what I'm saying? I want to cover myself with the utmost royalty. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's interesting. I never knew that. That is definitely an interesting perspective, sir. I knew it was some deep. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, the top hat is 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 really subliminal, man. What is really, you know what I'm saying? I'm a Freemason as well. Yeah. So I was gonna ask you about uh, that because I've seen I've seen your jewelry and stuff and you know I'm I was hesitant, you know what I'm saying, initially to ask you, but you know, I'm assuming now that you said it now I know, but I was assuming mm -hmm. that there was some affiliation with it. Like Of course. You know what I'm saying? Like, um I guess I mean there's so many questions I have, right? And I wanna make sure that I'm respectful in my ask questions. Him, ask you know what I'm saying? Um I guess being in the entertainment world and I was also a former Christian, right? You know, I would see stuff like Tra with especially with the Travis Scott, like I know it's like all mm -hmm. over the place right now, right? But it's mm -hmm. like just crazy, like you know what I'm saying? Like I would see this stuff and I would see things that would be said and and and, and narratives that would be written about I would say the craft. Is that safe to call it the craft? It is the craft. It is the craft, okay. Um, I would see all these narratives painted about masonry, and I would then ask questions like, well, is it masonry? Is it Freemasonry? Like, are they the same? Like, it just really became intriguing because there's so much, um, so much out there. You know what I'm saying? Um, I guess, where do I start? What well, is the craft exactly? Well, let me clear up what you said. Masonry is the work, the lifestyle. Freemasons is who we are. You know what I'm saying? We free to travel. We stone workers. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know if you know your history, you know what I'm saying? But just behind masonry itself, like in the ancient days, they had masons who built stuff. They were stone cutters. Yeah. Bricks. Yeah. Those bricks didn't start off square bricks. They started out as, as rough stones. Yeah. And you had to cut them in a specific way to square them off so they fit perfectly with the, what you're building. Right. So you learned that skill, and they were free to travel. Okay. Amongst the world. Okay. So that's where Freemasons come from. So. Okay. You know. So I guess my question would be, you know, I've I've heard a lot about from a historical perspective, like former presidents, like ones who initially started America, you know what I'm saying, being Freemasons as well. Like is all of that affiliated with the same organization or is there different spectrums of the organization, I guess? I mean, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Ma masonry is 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 uh uh one of the, well, it is the oldest fraternity. So it's global then. Oh, it's it's worldwide, bro. Okay, okay. Uh, I believe in seventeen hundreds or seventeen hundreds, it, it was it came over this way. You yeah. know what I'm saying? With to America, yeah. And then it split. See, I'm a Prince Hall Mason. You know what I'm saying? A Black Mason. Okay. So there is a difference then. Yeah, and no. You know what I'm saying? Like, like with just how life is is split up into. Social groups, religion, you know what I'm saying? Life is split up. So, you know, we got Prince Hall. He done it for us over here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He brought masonry over here and was able to let black people be Freemasons. Okay. Because at first they wasn't finna let a black man be a mason until Prince Hall came along. Okay. 
I'm a, good I'm man. gonna research Prince Hall. Prince Hall, good man. I'm gonna research Prince Hall. Okay, so I guess I guess my question would be, what does Freemasonry mean to the community? It means a lot to the community because you got lawyers and doctors and well, just regular people like me. You know what I'm saying? From Joe Blow to to me in the entertainment world, bro. Like, we do a lot for the community, especially men. You know what I'm saying? We make good men better, men. So, like, also young men. You know what I'm saying? We got the Knights of Pilat. Pythagoras, you know what I'm saying, where we show young men how to become better older men, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's it's a lot of things that we do that that it could be publicized, you know what I'm saying, but it ain't all about publicity all the time, you know what I'm saying? You kind of got to do things in a discreet way, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So... uh I know it's a lot of things on the internet that that is bad about Freemasonry, but those are the people that lack knowledge of what we really do. Yeah. So if I could use this platform and your platform to let people know, hey, it ain't all what you see, man. The conspiracies and the myths and all that stuff ain't yeah, really that, what you that, think that, it that, is. That's, you know what I'm saying? From the people outside that though looking in this though. Yeah. They don't know what's going on in here, my nigga, so they make up shit or, or assume what we doing in here. Yeah. So you you know, I you know, it, it is what it is. But I'm a proud Freemason, brother. You know what uh, I'm saying? Yeah. I I I think that I I don't personally help more folks than some churches. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy that you say that because just on a day to day basis. Quick question though: Can you get kicked out? Can you get kicked out the fraternity? Of course, you can get kicked out of anything. Bro. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. So, if so, you don't abide by the guidelines of a mason, bro, good character, you will get kicked out, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like we, like, like we don't allow the. You know the the extra shit, man. Like you know, like like we take good men, already good men. Yeah, you, you're supposed to come to us as a good man. Okay, already. Okay, you're not finna be accepted if you ain't a good man already. Okay, but we take a good man and we make him better. Yeah. So, you know, you you gotta be a good man, bro. You gotta you gotta have good character. Yeah. You know, so yeah, you can get kicked out. Okay, that makes sense. Of course. That's good to know. Smoking like turkeys, like what's my purpose? First thing that's on my mind. 